Good evening, good evening, good evening. God bless you. God bless you all. Listen, I just want to take a few, just a few moments of your time, if if I can. Just a few moments. God bless you, Dawn, Janie. God bless you, Stacy. God bless you. <clears throat> Vicky, God bless you. Betty, God bless you. Gloria, God bless you. Amen. Listen, I just want to take a few minutes of your time. Um, I want to talk to you today, just for a few minutes. I'm over here studying and preparing for um, service tomorrow because um, I have to speak tomorrow. And so, um, no, no, Anthony, I'm not going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I'm not going to do a, a full uh, Bible study tonight. Um just want to share a few things with you guys real quickly. Um, basically in the form of a question. And, um, and the question is, are you still hungry? You know, when I look in the word of God, there is a story of an Ethiopian eunuch that was, this Ethiopian eunuch was the treasurer for King, Queen uh, Candace. And this Ethiopian eunuch was every year going back and forth to Jerusalem. Um, and the Lord sent, the Holy Spirit sent Philip down to Gaza to really, you know, do his work. And when he went out there, he saw this Ethiopian, he heard this Ethiopian eunuch reading the scriptures. But he asked him this question. He says, do you understand what you're reading? And the guy, um, the eunuch spoke in this manner. He said, how can I unless someone showed me? Um, and that really started me thinking because I've been engaged with a lot of conversation over the last several years with people who are going to church, going through the motions, going to Bible studies, going to do whatever they do, but deep down inside are still hungry. You know, the easy answer would be that they're getting milk or they're not getting any any sustenance in the word. But but we it's it's a part of a larger problem. And it's a part of a larger problem that I want to um, talk about. Um, I'm not going to talk about it in full detail tonight, because, like I said, I have to prepare for tomorrow. But I want you guys to sort of you can, you can even post questions on this video questions relative to this and, and information relative to this, because I believe that there is a duality of responsibility. Okay. There is a responsibility for churches to, um, to share the gospel for pastors to preach the gospel. Um, there is a responsibility for that. However, there's a shared responsibility that the word of God says, study to show yourself approved unto God, who is uh, being a workman, not being ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So when you look at it, there's this duality of responsibility that not only is the church responsible to help us, um, but we're also responsible to it, responsible to help us, right? Are you guys understanding what I mean? We're, there's this dual responsibility to make sure that we are doing our part. You know, when I look at, you know, in, in all fairness, you know, I'm, I'm talking from the position of a pastor, but also somebody who, when I was younger, and even to this point, I'm hungry for truth, you know, and that's a good question, Anthony. We're going to touch on that. We're going to touch on that when we get back together. The difference between and also recognizing, um, recognizing meat and recognizing milk, you know, or, or something that's junk, you know, uh, we, we're going to talk about all of that stuff. And so make sure you post all your questions here and comments on this feed here, because, you know, there's a lot of people that are going through the motions they're going through the motions and we'll talk about it. I'll probably do this tomorrow 
But we, 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 there's a lot of people going through the emotions and the motions of, of, of ministries. And I'm talking about leaders. And believe it or not, there's a lot of pastors that's going through the motion of pastoring. But deep down inside are still hungry. And, and so, you know, for them, the, the, the motivation is when we're doing something new. The motivation is when we have, uh, we're getting a new building or we're opening, starting a new ministry. The motivation for them is when we get new members, right? Um, but, but is that correct? Jesus said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. And so when he came to give us this life, this life is something that we all must, we all must have this inner drive, if you will, this inner passion, if you will. You know, maybe you are on the worship team and, you know, you're singing and everybody loves your song, but every Sunday you are pouring out, but you're still hungry. And it's only a matter of time before, just like in the physical realm, there's only a matter of time before your hunger affects your behavior. It is it's only a matter of time before you get just enough frustrated where you say, you know, I can't take no more. And, and I'm here to tell you, you know, um, very often, my fight is not with the devil. I don't know about y'all. My fight is not with the devil. And my fight is not with people. My fight is with my own body that tries to keep us so busy and doing stuff and never taking care of those things which are priorities taking care of those things that are essential for our longevity, for our steadfastness. It is essential. And so I want to talk about that when we get together on tomorrow, because I'm going to make this very short tonight, because like I said, I still need to prepare for, for tomorrow. But it is important to know that are you still hungry? That's, that's a good question. Are you still hungry? You're doing what you're doing, but are you still hungry? You, you're, you're praising, you're shouting, God, you're shouting, you're, you're clapping hands, you're stomping feet, you're speaking in tongues, but you're still hungry inside. You're still thirsting inside. Remember, the book of James says that every person is tempted when they are drawn away and enticed of their own desires. So that means if, if you're not content inside, if you're not happy inside, if you're not settled inside, then the enemy has plenty of things to kind of pull your attention. He has plenty of things to try to draw you away. And so this Ethiopian eunuch was going back and forth to Jerusalem. But why go there if you're not understanding? Why go there if you, you don't have a clue of what you're reading? And there's a lot of people that have never been able to settle in their minds. That's God talking to me, right? Okay. There's a lot of people who, who have yet to understand the voice of God. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and another they will not follow. So um, Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. What I teach in my church um, and, and I can't talk for every pastor, but what I teach in my church is that, yeah, you know, God sets me up to, to be your leader, to be your head. And, and in the church, you know, I have to share with you what the Lord says, but guess what? If I veer off course and if I fall apart, people of God, you need to have something in you. And, and I, I wish I was talking to every one of you, but at least two or three of you that would truly acknowledge that, yeah, it's good to have pastors. It's safe to have bishops and leaders and apostles, and it's safe to have all these people. But you better hear from God yourself. 
You better know the voice of God and know when stuff is being given to you that is, is, is junk. For the Bible says, like I said earlier, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman needing not to be ashamed, rightly dividing of truth. So in other words, you know, I can't stand before God and say, God, you know, I didn't live right because my pastor messed up. Oh, Lord, I, I, I stopped serving you because the minister were, were, were hypocrites. Oh, God, I stopped serving you because my pastor was caught in an affair. Or, God, I stopped serving you because, no, 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 because God is not going to hold you accountable for what your pastor did. God is going to hold your pastor accountable for what he, he or she has done. God is going to hold that minister accountable for what they have done. But God is going to hold you accountable for what you have done. Because God sent his son into the world that whosoever would believe in him, right? He says, he said, you got to believe in him. He said, then you shall not perish, but you shall have everlasting life, right? So, so what happens is that when I believe in Christ, now Christ tells me, okay, I want you to join one of my churches because you have to, through fellowship and through interaction with the good saints, the sometimes these saints, the hypocritical saints, and the devils and the demons and the uh, unsaved people that all come to church, right? Um, God says, I want you to go to that place because if you keep your eyes on me, glory, oh my God, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Help me, Lord. Listen, God is saying, if you keep my, your eyes on me while you're in the midst of that mess, okay, while you're in the midst of the chaos, while you're in the midst of the drama, while you're in the midst of the issues, then what's going to happen is that your faith in me, this is what God is saying, your faith in me is going to make you strong and perfect. That's why the word of God says, let patience have her perfecting work, because then when it is done, you shall be complete and entire, lacking nothing. Too many of us, we don't have the, the strength, the wherewithal, the patience, the, the, the steadfastness, the faithfulness. We don't have the, the foundational truths that teaches us that we don't run just because somebody else act crazy. Wow, this is going to be deep. I could tell it already. It's going to be deep. You don't run because somebody else go crazy because if that's the case, the Bible says that you would need to get out of the whole world because it's everywhere. It's on the job. It's in the supermarket. It's in the restaurants. It's in uh, your school. And you got hypocrites everywhere. So you don't leave those things. So don't use that as an excuse to leave the church. You, most people say, well, pastor, the church is supposed to be better. No, no, no. The church is not the building. The church is God's people and God's people are holy, but not everybody that comes to the church is God's people are God's people. Not everybody who say, Lord, Lord will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not everybody who say, Jesus, I did this in your name and I did that in your name, that they're going to enter into the kingdom of heaven because the kingdom of heaven is only for those who have um, truly put their faith in Christ and in God. So that means when I go to the church, why would God allow me to go to a church that's imperfect? He would allow me to go to a church that's imperfect because truthfully, I'm imperfect. Number two, he allowed me to go to a church that's imperfect because if I could keep my eyes on him in the midst of those imperfect people, if I could keep my eyes, if I could still pray when everybody stops praying, if I could still sing when everybody stops singing, if I could still rejoice when everybody stops rejoicing, if I can still do all that stuff, then guess what? It's going to make me stronger and my faith is going to improve me. It's going to strengthen me. He's going to develop me, right? Now, what's the building for? The building is for, the church building is a gathering place. That's all it is. It's a gathering place for people to come 
who who say that they are they are children of the most high God. The Bible tells us to come together. Now, one of the things God says, he says, bring in the tithes and offering in the house that they might be meat in my house. Now, here's the point that I tell anybody who says, well, pastor, I don't go to church because church is phonies and I meet with saints. Okay. So bring them to your house. And when you bring them to your house, make sure that you are regularly teaching them. Number one, make sure that you're regularly feeding them. Make sure that if they have any needs, then you're providing for their needs. And let's go even, even deeper. Make sure that you stand before God saying, God, I am accountable for their souls. Because if you can't do that, if you can't stand before God and say, God, I'm accountable for that person's soul. Then you can't be their pastor. And if you can't be their pastor, then guess what? Every church that God has established has a pastor. And we're going to go into so many things. And I, I'm sorry I got y'all in this temporary setup. I'm just holding the phone in my hand, you know, but I just want to share this really quickly with you because I want you guys, I want your minds to start moving and your spirits to start churning on this because of the fact of that we need to talk about why are people still hungry and they're going to church, they're going to services, they bought the tape series, they bought the DVDs, they bought the books. Look in your houses, you got books galore, you got tape series galore, you got everybody's song in ministry and why are you still hungry? Why are you still empty? Why are you still frustrated? Why are you still um, unresolved with things in your life? Why, is you, why are you still holding on to the death of a loved one? Why are you still, why are you still hungry? Why are you still hungry? Isaiah chapter one says that the whole head is sick. There is no soundness there, but there's wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. He says they have not been bound. They have not no soothing um, salve or ointment has been put in them. They have not been wrapped up. They're just bleeding. And there's a lot of people and people of God, if you know anything about me, you know this. I'm not trying to connect you to Pastor Rodney. I'm trying to connect you to Jesus Christ. I'm trying to connect you to the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm trying to connect you to your father above. Because people will change. Times will change. Look around the world. Churches are changing. Everything is changing. And things that once was holy is now unholy. Things that once were unholy is now holy. I'm here to tell you it's acceptable by people. And so your faith must be in God and in God alone. And what you do for your pastors and your ministers and your elders and your bishops, you pray for them. What you do for your brothers and sisters in Christ, you pray for them. And then you live a life before them that your life will be a gospel for them, you know? And this is powerful. This is, this, and I'm going to tell y'all, before I even tell y'all how to distinguish between meat and milk, this is going to be meat teaching. This is not for the faint of heart. This is not for hypocritical people. This is not for babes in the Lord. Lord, this is not for the religious people who, who just want to use cliches and just want to use stuff. No, I want to get to the root of the matter of are you still hungry? Are you still hungry? With everything that you're doing, are you still hungry? With all the stuff that you're involved with, are you still hungry? Then are you just adding stuff to sort of hopefully take care of the hunger, the thirst that's within? That's what Jesus told the woman at the well. He says, if you ask of me the water that I have to drink, he says, you'll never thirst again. And you won't come to this well to draw water anymore. In other words, not that you won't need water, natural water. But this woman was, it was the methods of what she was using, the standards of her life. She was living by a certain code. And God was saying, you're not going to need to do that anymore. And so there's a lot of believers 
I, I really wish you guys were nearby and you could come to church on Sunday. I mean, for one vision, because I, I feel like the Lord is going to do a marvelous thing. I really wish you were nearby. But too many people are going through the motions and they're still hungry. They're shouting, they're dancing, they're sweating in church, and, and they're, uh, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Oh! And they're going home hungry. No better. And so, let me encourage you. If you are nearby Jersey City, come to 41 Vision tomorrow. I'm not asking you to come um, to be a member or nothing like that. I'm asking you, if you can get up and be at 41 Vision at 8 o'clock in the morning, be there. I'm telling you, you will you will find food for your soul. And one thing, even look, at my church, some of my leaders complain to me and say, Pastor, why won't you open the doors of the church so that people might join? I tell them, you do it. Because I stay focused on what God called me to do. God told, called me to preach and to teach. I want the Lord to speak to the hearts of people. Thank you, Angela. For those of you who, who want the address, there's the address right there, 315 Forest Street in Jersey City. We start at 8 o'clock on the dot, 8 a.m. on the dot. Don't miss any part of it. You'll be done for if you got another service that begins at 11 o'clock or whatever the case would be, which most services start around that time. We'll be done um, around like 10, 1030, 10, around 10, 1030. But if you have to leave a little earlier, you can leave earlier. You know, if you have to leave earlier to go to your church. But I'm telling you, there's going to be food in the house. There's going to be meat in the house for those who are hungry. Um, and it's not rhetoric. It's not talking about um, religion. No, it's about connecting people to the true source, our Heavenly Father. That's what the whole gospel plan is about, to bring us back into right fellowship with the Lord. And too many of us are just going through the motions and we're hungry, we're starving. And this is why we're, we're having these odd interactions and these frustrations and anger and sadness and confusion and weariness and frustration and and all that stuff this is why you go through that stuff is because you're not connected to the source it doesn't matter how much i charge a battery right from the moment that i start using that thing that battery's power is ebbing away right hey anthony if you if you're nearby come to the church Come to the church. Come to the church. 8 a.m. Because, let, let me tell you something. My, the things I do in the church and the things I do in life is not based upon whatever stage that I'm on. No, it's based upon my relationship and my response to my Heavenly Father. So, there are times that, yeah, I will shout. There are times that I will dance. But, my dance is not motivated by a drum or organ or keyboard or hand claps. My dance is motivated by the one who I love and the one who loved me first. And so the question is, are you still hungry? Are you still hungry? And so I encourage you, I'll say it again. If you're nearby, make it your business to be at 41 Vision at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. And um, God's willing, tomorrow, probably like tomorrow afternoon or so, I'm going to break this down. Um, God's willing. And so I love you all. Hope you guys had a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. I had a very relaxing Thanksgiving, very restful 
Um, Y'all don't know that because of the things I do, uh, when it comes to holidays, those are generally my times to rest, you know, and so I really don't find myself in too much of a busy, busy or loud or crazy place. I usually find myself resting at home um, and then I work on music. <laughs> hey, y'all, guess what? I need y'all to pray for me. I think I said this to you before. I'm almost done with this song, right? For those of you who don't know, I write music. I write songs. And um, there's this song that the Lord gave me that has been ministering to my spirit. And I'm here at home recording it. Um, and I want to release it to you guys. Um, and so, you know, keep me in prayer um, because it, it was given to me. And I'm so grateful and it has blessed my heart. Um, and I pray that it'd be a blessing to you and, and very strengthening and healing to you. And so um, keep me in prayer with that. Amen. Um, so prayerfully, I release it. I'm not the, I don't by any means think I'm the greatest singer or uh, keyboard player. No, but what I do, I'm a worshiper and I worship the Lord. And I give him glory in everything. And, you know, it's something about worship. When you, when you know how to worship, you can lose yourself. You can lose yourself. And just everything of this world pales in comparison if you are a worshiper. And so, so I would encourage you, you know, Keep me in your prayers, um, and God's willing, tomorrow um, we will go through this whole teaching, Are You Still Hungry? And so, God bless you. Have a blessed weekend. Don't forget, if you're nearby um, 315 Forest Street in Jersey City, come to service tomorrow at 8 a.m. I'm telling you, your soul will be lit on fire you know it'll be lit on fire because listen and i'm not saying this because i'm the past the senior pastor i'm saying this because lord have mercy i feel every single week and we have some of the members on tonight every single week god shows up and shows out okay so um if you're able to yeah, yeah. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. And that's what I'm praying for. And that's what I, I you know, I, I just, I, I heard it one morning and I got up out of bed early in the morning and I jumped on the keyboard and right away the chords and everything came out and, and right behind that, the lyrics came out. And I mean, it came out so quickly and so smoothly as if it was the Lord speaking through me. And it's beautiful. It is a beautiful, beautiful song. And so I'm getting emotional. <laughs> I hear you, Kiana. Listen, maybe I'll talk. Uh, maybe, Kiana, if you ask really nicely, uh, Jacqueline. Jacqueline Howard, she's a member of our church. She generally posts our um, sermons. Um, maybe she'll give snippets of, of the rest. What's up, Pete? What's going on? Pete, get ready. I'm going to need you tomorrow. I'm going to need you to come on time and uh, let's, let's get down. We got some, I'm, I'm excited. And so let's, let's, let's get it going. All right. So, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, Donna, if you can make it, make it. I'm telling you, it's, <laughs> everybody who comes there, you know, look, we don't, we don't snatch nobody's members. We don't. <laughs> we don't do that. We don't do that at all. You know, we, we feed you. We're almost like, how can I say, we, our church is like grandparents, right? 
right? It's like grandparents. We we going to feed you and send you back to your mama. <laughs> we going we gonna to feed you and send you back to your daddy. We going to feed you and send you back to your pastor, right? Because we want you to be. So Anthony, get your behind in church tomorrow. I'm telling you. Listen, some things that we're praying for, there's victory for us already. Right? You got to you got to get into the house of God. You're not going to be victorious by yourself. The Bible says two are better than one. For if they fall into a ditch, they can help each other out. It says, but woe to the one who falls alone. Oh, thank you, Dawn. Yeah, yeah, our house, my God. Worship is, is number one and teaching and worship is together, combined together in prayer. We believe in prayer. And this is why people of God, you know, those who are following the teachings the, and I'm talking about following it faithfully. Those who are following it faithfully are not being overwhelmed by the enemy because God gives us the victory. Those people who come in and uh, there you go, Kiana, I hear you. <laughs> Those people who come in. See, Anthony, I'm trying to tell you. See? So you haven't been to church in two weeks. Come on. You need to get there. Don't make no excuses. And listen, at our church, you if you want to wear a suit, wear a suit. You want to wear a pair of jeans and a shirt, wear a pair of jeans and a shirt. You want to come with jogging pants and a t-shirt, come with jogging pants and a t-shirt. But don't let the devil lie to you and talk about, oh, you ain't got no clothes to wear. Oh, if you have more time, you got plenty of time because God knows if someone called you right now, right now I'm home, relax. And if someone called me and said, hey, I need you to walk 20 blocks to this place we left $10 million for you. Guess what? I'm going to get up off this couch, get up off this chair, and I'm going to walk. But there is nothing more valuable than your soul. There's nothing more valuable than your victory. For God sent his only son, Jesus, to die that you might be victorious. Not that you might be a victim. Not that you might be uh, somebody who is, uh, is, is frustrated or someone who's aggravated or somebody who's at their wit's ends. No, God sent his son, Jesus, so that you might have eternal life and life more abundantly. God sent his son, Jesus, so that you might be more than a conqueror, more than an overcomer, more than victorious. So if you're not experiencing that, you're hungry. And so God is sending this boy, Rodney, uh, uh, as a type of Philip to come to you and say, do you understand? Do you understand? You're not going to be victorious. Keep doing the same thing. No, Anthony, that's not the way. That's not the way. That's not the way. And I'm not talking about rhetoric. And I'm not talking about junk. I'm not talking about this regular stuff that's going on in, 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 in the churches, in churches today. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Brunette. Amen. Listen, I'm talking about some serious stuff. I'm talking about too, too long we've been sitting and reacting to stuff. But the church of God is proactive. The Bible says the kingdom of God suffered violence, but the violent takes by force. You ain't going to dance and clap your hand and enemy going to run because even with Jesus, let me go deep with you right now. The Bible says when Jesus was being tempted of the devil in the wilderness, right? The Bible says that after Jesus defeated Satan with the word, right? The scripture says he left him for a more opportune time. In other words, he's coming back. In other words, he's going to try you again. As long as there's life in your body, he's going to keep coming at you. So you dancing and shouting and screaming is not going to stop his attacks. You got to have the power to overcome him. Y'all don't get me started. Don't get me started. Too many people are hungry. 
And that's one of the reasons why I had asked God years ago, Lord, I want to teach your people the truth because of the fact of that I saw a lot of rhetoric. I saw a lot of uh, uh, pie in the sky and, 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 and playful things that made people shout, made them dance, made them laugh, made them clap. But then they went home and was cussing each other out. They went home and was, 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 was beating the kids upside the wall. They went home and, and was frustrated on their job. I'm telling you, it's time out for that mess. It's time out for that. It's time for you to live. So be there tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Now, if you choose to be disobedient, that's on you. Because only you know right now if the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart. If the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart, you need to do everything in your power to get moving. That means start now. Don't be looking for no stockings in the morning. No, if you need stockings, put stockings. If you like putting stockings on, put stockings on. If, if you want not sure if that suit fits, then try it on tonight. You got plenty of time. Try it on tonight. So that way, when you put it on in the morning, you have to worry about, oh, this thing don't fit. So now I can't go to church. No, no, no. Don't use no excuse. And set your alarm clock. Check your phone. Check your phone to see if your volume is on. Check your phone to see if it's not on vibrate, right? Call a friend and say, hey, I need you to wake me up in the morning. No, do whatever you need to do, but this is for your life. Now, you want to play around and you want to give uh, cliches and you want to give scripture quotes and, and all stuff like that, but you're, not, but you're still hungry? Come on, people of God. Come on. Come on. I've seen a lot of people, you know, I, the Lord will send me to them to, to share with them the truth. And they'll sit there and, and constantly throw up excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse. That's why the scripture says all day long, God stretch out his hands to disobedient and gang saying people all day long. He is, he is all day long. God is pleading with us all day long. He's pleading with us. So, all right, so get ready, get ready. That's all I'm gonna tell you. Get ready, get ready. I love you all. Have a blessed and marvelous evening in the name of Jesus. Um, for those of you who the Holy Spirit has spoken to, I will see you tomorrow. I will see you tomorrow at 8 a.m., 8 a.m. It is 8, 10, 11, 12 right now. Yeah. 8, 12 right now. So you've got plenty of time. Get some rest. Get to bed early. Get to bed early so you can get up on time. Okay? Take note of traffic. You know, if you live 40 minutes away, don't leave your house 40 minutes because then you got the enemy that's trying to stop you. If you live 40 minutes away, then leave your house at least an hour earlier. I'm telling you, this is for your life, for your soul, for your deliverance. Okay? And don't worry about it. If you got to leave early, you leave early. But come and be fed with the power of God's word and the power of his Holy Spirit. Come and be fed. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm offering you. I'm not offering you anything. I'm not offering you bells and whistles. And I ain't offering you a whole lot of junk. I'm telling you. You want to be fed so that you will leave full? Come. All right? So let me finish getting ready. I love you all. Have a blessed and marvelous evening. God bless all the pastors that are watching. God bless all the ministers and the elders. May the Lord bless you and your churches in the name of Jesus. Um, those of you that are, are far away and you can't make it um, uh, over to the church, if you can't make it over in church, then I pray that the Lord's Spirit would bless you at your church. But I'm telling you. Whew. Okay. Have a good evening. God bless.